interwebs, I hope you're all doing well, and I am back here at my toy shelf because I have had a, another weird thought that I just need to talk to you all about because honestly this is something that has like haunted me since I was a little kid and I just want to talk about it somewhere, so why not here and why not now? Uh, so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because as many of you know, I listen to audiobooks to help me fall asleep because I have really bad insomnia, so listening to someone give me their sultry voice as I fall asleep is very comforting to me. Uh, so uh, probably something to analyze in there. Uh, but uh, normally I listen to audiobooks from my childhood, like things I read a bunch when I was a little kid, something I don't have to like think a ton about. And so I listen to the audiobooks of Animorphs or a series of important events, uh, which by the way, uh, Tim Curry doing the series of important events audiobooks, amazing. But I just recently restarted listening to the Aragon books, the like Christopher Paolini uh, fantasy series that was really, really popular when I was a young kid. Now the Aragon books are quite literally like the most basic of fantasy. They're quite literally like Star Wars with a fantasy sheen on top of it and like dragons and stuff. But as a kid, I loved that shit. Like it was just a lot of fun. And, and now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, this is very basic fantasy, like just doing every single trope. But as a kid, you don't know that. And I I really enjoyed the books. In fact, so much did I enjoy them that I literally have a signed copy of Eldest by Christopher Paolini himself. Uh, and I believe uh, Mr. Paolini is the same age as me. So um, he's doing pretty well for himself, I would, one would assume. Uh, I know he has another sci-fi book out. But anyways, this is a long preamble to say, I was so pumped as a kid to go and see the Aragon movie that they were going to make because, you know, Harry Potter was popular, so they were adapting everything into, uh, you know, big movies to try and see what the next big thing was. Now, when I went and saw the Aragon movie, it was absolutely terrible. They ruined that story. The casting was very strange. They had like John Malkovich as Galbatorix, the evil king dude. They had like a very like pretty sounding voice for the uh for the dragon character, Saphira, where I'm like, she's a dragon, like have her be gruff. Like, why does she have to be all pretty sounding like Brom was right, Aragon. The time of the dragon riders has come again. It was just a very, very bad movie. Uh absolutely terrible. But as a kid, again, I didn't really realize that I'm like, oh, this seems fun until one particular moment in the movie that I still have in my head as like the moment that showed me like, oh, this is what bad writing is. And that moment to me was early in the film. We have this MacGuffin, which is a stone that all these characters want to get. Uh, Aragon, the main character, has it, and all the bad guys are looking for it, and they're all coming after him. Now, at this point in the story, technically, we as the viewers aren't supposed to know that this stone is actually a dragon egg. Aragon doesn't know it, uh, and all the villains haven't stated that to us. Now, obviously, all of us in the audience have paid to see a big dragon fantasy movie, so we all know what it is technically, but none of the characters within the universe know. But the movie has a cutaway to John Malkovich as King Galbatorix. So it, he's not even in the book version of this, but they had John Malkovich, so they wanted to use John Malkovich. Uh, and so they cut away to him. And he's looking around, being very pissed off that he has lost control of the dragon egg. But he turns to his minions, who he wants to send after to go and get the dragon egg from Aragon, and he says, I suffer without my stone. Do not prolong my suffering. And as a kid, I was sitting there going, why would he say that? Why would he say he hungers for his stone? That's a really weird thing for him to say because he knows that it's a dragon egg. So the only reason that he would say, I hunger for my stone is if he, as the character of Galbatorix, was somehow aware that the audience was watching and didn't want the audience watching the movie to know at that point that he was talking about a dragon egg. Like the only reason he says he hungers for his stone, which is an objectively silly and dumb line, is to keep the revelation that this is a dragon egg from the audience. So quite literally, the writers of the movie cut away to a character who's not even in the books to have him say a dumb line that is only there to sort of like weirdly obscure the fact that this is a dragon egg, which we as the audience audience already know is what it's going to be Consider we paid money for the dragon movie. It was like the dumbest line and it was the most silly moment in my life and it was the first moment as a kid. I mean I, I'm sure I had realized beforehand but like this moment to me is like crystallized in my brain as like do not write movies like this. If I ever get to write a movie never write a line that terrible or have a scene that pointless that just showcases to the audience how bad of a writer you are. Uh, like, 
I'm sure there was other moments before this that I'm like, that's bad writing. But to me, like, at, even as an adult, that scene just has wormed its way in my brain. And I just remembered it while listening to the audiobook of Aragon. So I, I just had a rant about it because it is objectively to me one of the worst scenes <laughs> ever in a movie. Uh, also, I will say, though, uh, the movie was bad. The books are OK. The video game, though, the Aragon video game, amazing. Surprisingly really good. Also, Jeremy Irons in, in the sh movie was also great. And Robert Carlyle. Stargate Universe's Robert Carlyle. He was a thing in that movie too. What a weird, what a weird movie Aragon 1 was. What a waste of talent. <sighs> Anyways, I had a rant about that. Enjoy!